If you're unaware, and if you really are, I'm sorry to break this to you, but this year is an election year. And not just for the US, but for much of the world, including over 50 countries with an expected 2 billion voters. In some ways, it really feels like 2024 is on a collision course with destiny. The world's going to keep on turning, but how we choose to govern ourselves, how we choose to respond to conflicts both foreign and domestic, and how we choose to move forward through the tumultuous 20s will undoubtedly be decided this year. Which reminds me of my favorite episode of Rick and Morty. One in which encapsulates an election so important that it changes both who and how the Citadel is controlled. It not only tells the story of a drastic shift in power, but also how corruption can fester from the most powerful people at the top to the lowly, insignificant cops on the street. Today, we're talking about power, propaganda, corruption, and yes, speeches. This is Rick and Morty, Season 3, Episode 7, The Rick Lantis Mix-Up. But before we begin, if you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow so I can continue making more. Now, back to the video. Another, please, with less water. Hey, cheer up, pal. A Morty's gonna be president. Imagine this kisser getting blamed for everything. I guess I should have had more faith. It's not faith you need. It's fear. I've always appreciated this episode of Rick and Morty above the rest because it takes a satirical look at the election process, political media, and how corruption is found everywhere from bottom to top, all within a well-contained 23 minutes of adult animation. It's impressive to say the least. The Rick Lantis mix-up is both a plot-driven episode following the wider election of a quote-unquote evil Morty and a character-driven episode following a Rick and Morty cop duo, as well as a group of school Mortys showing that everyone is affected by the shift in power, not only the politicians and police within the system, but even, and maybe most pervasively, the youth. But let's first focus on the Rick and Morty cop duo. What's immediately interesting about this is that it's a role reversal. We don't expect a Morty to be training the new rookie Rick because Ricks are the ruling class not Mortys. The Ricks, presumably, as we see in the beginning montage, run the police force, media, they're the teachers, architects, they're the working class, and the rich. They take up every position of power, big and small. Which is why, when we're confronted with a policeman Morty, which is not only a position of power, but directly in charge of a Rick, it catches the audience off guard. This isn't a Morty's place in society. It begs us to question what makes this Morty different, and we're given an answer to that almost immediately within the first conversation conversation between these two. As a protesting Morty lunges onto the hood of the car, proclaiming that Mortys are human, Cop Morty immediately retaliates by screaming at him, dehumanizing him, and using excessive force. The thing that's different about Cop Morty is that he's corrupt. He has no moral qualms with putting down his fellow Morty, and like with most Ricks, he views himself as above them and above the law. Cop Rick calls him out on this, but is just met with discontent that he's bought into his sensitivity training, and even dares Rick to report Report him because he knows no one cares. This corruption has infiltrated the police force and is so insidious that it's turned Cop Morty into the literal thing his people are fighting against, and there's no accountability as the whole system has turned a blind eye to injustice. There's a saying that absolute power corrupts absolutely, but actually I don't think that quite fits here. Absolute power doesn't corrupt absolutely, it reveals. Cop Morty is placed in a position of power over the rest of the Mortys and reveals to us that he's more than willing to play the part of subjugator once given the opportunity in a system ripe with corruption. Instead of using his small amount of power to undermine the unjust system, he instead feeds into it, cosplaying as part of the ruling class, which is diametrically opposed with Cop Rick. Cop Rick, alongside his partner, sees firsthand the injustices in Mortytown. Mortytown, being the underbelly of the Citadel, is ravished by crime, drugs, and gangs. This is the ghetto and a far cry from the rest of the Citadel. But as it turns out, this isn't really a critique on the ghettos themselves, but rather on the systems that allow crime and dysfunction to propagate. Coprick is thrust into this world and nearly succumbs to his partner's worldview after a bootleg portal fluid bust in which he gets stabbed. And perhaps he would have finally believed that his partner was just being realistic until Cop Morty disintegrates the entire building with the Mortys inside instead of doing the proper paperwork. And when pushed, Cop Morty justifies his actions as... Same old story! Morty's killing Mortys! And it's in this moment, 
In this one single gaze, Rikop Rick questions everything entirely. The actions of the Mortys were undoubtedly wrong, but that doesn't make his partner right. The police force was never intended to propagate crime, but rather subvert it. Yet here they are acting as judge, jury, and executioners. They've overstepped, and it brings into question the legitimacy of the entire police force. This storyline is brought to its eventual conclusion at the Creepy Morty where they meet up with Big Morty, and in an incredibly insightful conversation, we learn how the dynamic between the police and criminals work, and it's here where a question is answered. Big Morty likes to contribute to keeping the peace in Morty Town. Think of him as a drug lord, and us as cops on his payroll. Morty. Which, Which Morty? Morty? My, my partner. Morty, you're right. Morty Town is bad, but... That doesn't mean that we have to be. Hey, what's going on here, Morty? W which, which Morty? Morty? The cop, morons! Don't worry about Rick, Big Morty. He's new. He doesn't understand how it works. That's what you said about your last partner. It wasn't ever a question if Cop Morty was corrupt or not. We knew that from the very beginning, but here we definitively see just how deep the corruption runs. This isn't an issue isolated to the problems of one crooked cop, but the entire system. Remember, this Morty would face no accountability even if he were reported, which is why he so callously threatens his partner to do so, as the Ricks would brush it off saying, just don't think about it. And this isn't the first time a cop like this would try to undermine Big Morty's business as Cop Morty's last partner tried to do the same thing but was replaced. But additionally, I can only assume that Cop Morty wouldn't even be in the position he's in if he weren't also corrupt like the rest of the Ricks. There is of course always some amount of self-accountability. Recognizing that the system is flawed doesn't alleviate Cop Morty from the crimes he's committed, but instead it reveals an ugly truth, that a single individual cannot change a corrupt system from within despite how much we'd like to believe so. A system will either force you to become a cog in the machine, revealing you're truly not so different from the ones at the top, or if you stand in your moral convictions, you'll be replaced. In the end, Coprick does stand up to Big Morty, but does break his moral code. In a shootout, he shoots Cop Morty, putting an end to his reign of terror, while at the same time sinking down to the same lows of his former partner. With this, he turns himself in, as he now knows he's no better better than the rest of the corrupt bureaucrats he once fought against. And when asked what happened, he echoes a sentiment from Cop Morty, but this time a more realistic assessment of reality. What the hell happened in there? Same old story. Rick's killing Mortys. Which brings me to propaganda. This episode handles propaganda in a really interesting way. First is the most obvious, the media, particularly through the news. The Citadel Morning News is unsurprisingly hosted by two Ricks, and when they address the election, they're far from impartial. They actively mock Evil Morty and don't even take him seriously. And given the broader divide in the Citadel, it's clear that the news is used as a tool to further divide rather than inform the people. But perhaps the most pertinent divide is never pushed by the news, which is the class divide between the rich and poor. Instead, the news creates motivation for infighting and the citizens are sold the solution through products like Simple Ricks. This form of propaganda is much more effective as it comes through consumerism through products like Simple Ricks. It promises the feeling of a fulfilled life while simultaneously keeping most people far from actual fulfillment. It's an illusion of agency, which is a literal lie being sold to the people. The news does their job of pushing an artificial divide to obscure the very real and blatant lies of the rich, which is where the real divide lies, and people buy into it only allowing the problems to persist. And it's crucial that the ruling class of ricks keep infighting amongst their constituents so that they're too busy fighting amongst each other to fight real injustice, and if anyone rises up, to squash it immediately. In fact, we see this done successfully in this episode, as a factory worker rebels against the system. This rick is important because he not only rebels and calls out the citadel and their lies, but he's an example of what happens when you go against the upper class. Of course, the media predictably downplays it, but when the owner comes in to resolve the issue, he uses this event to profit from. In the vein of never letting a good tragedy go to waste, by giving this Rick a taste of freedom, he subjugates him to a life of exploitation on the behalf of the owner. The ruling class is fine with selling the ideas of rebellion against the rich as long as the status quo is upheld and none of the underlying issues ever get addressed. Which finally brings me to... Evil Morty. 
Evil Morty is the only one to both address the issues while having the political will to take action, and there are two significant speeches he gives in this episode worth analyzing, the first of which happens during the presidential debate, where Evil Morty explicitly calls out the divide between the ones who like the Citadel divided and the rest of them. It's a very unifying speech, and it's what ultimately turns a tide for him in the election and sets the stage for a complete restructure of the status quo. He explicitly blames the problems on the one feeding off the death of the Citadel as the issue, while implicitly blaming the rich oligarchs at the top. Essentially, Evil Morty does an excellent job here of reframing the problem. The Citadel was never truly divided between Ricks and Mortys as much as they were by class. Sure, they have their differences, but the common ground that they both share is the one subjugating them are the rich and powerful. And if you were to stop here, this could all seem like some crazy conspiracy theory that some shadowy group of rich and powerful Ricks are actually pulling the strings of the Citadel until, well, Evil Morty's final speech. This final speech, and really the entire episode, is filled to the brim with meta subtext, but this is where it all finally comes together, and it's not really a speech at all, because what else is there left to say? Everything leading up to this point speaks for itself, and Evil Morty is correct, speeches are for campaigning, but now it's time for action. The only questions left are, do the ends justify the means, but also, is there any way to take action to correct a flawed system, be it through actions within the system itself? acts of rebellion, or a full-on coup where you're not deemed evil by the previous regime. Or perhaps, evil is more of a perspective rather than an objective truth, and sooner or later we'll all be evil Morty too. At least, on this side of the curve. Thanks for watching. Peace.